Hello, everyone. Welcome to Let's Talk About God. Hello. Hi, Sean. Hi, I, I, I Rod. Hi. Uh, I hope you all very good today. And um, I, I, I'm sure you have a beautiful day there. Not so much rain. Not today. And over here is very nice. Praise the Lord. Mm. Thanks for joining us uh, this week. And uh, I'm thankful for everybody who will. will uh, uh, those people who will watch this video, I hope they enjoy it. And uh, we look forward to to share uh, the the good news with everybody as much we we learn from Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, IPA will be sharing a twenty minute sermon on Creator Law and Government. The, uh, verse human law and government, which will be followed by question and answer. Following sermon will be open up the program for question and answer in regard to hyper sermon. So please keep all questions relevant to the sermon topic. The question are not solely for our panel to answer, but also for our guests on the program too. So feel free to provide a short answer with Bible verses or a Bible story or a personal experience relevant to the question at end to support your answer. Now we invite my brother, Sean, to pray for us if it's possible. Thank you, Sean. It is, it is possible. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, it James. is possible. Um, let's bow our heads. Dear loving Father, we just, we just come to you with open hearts. And though we desire to learn more about you and uh, your character and your government, and uh, we think there's no greater witness of who you are and how you want to run the universe than was revealed at such a high cost through the life and death of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And Lord, we are grateful and thankful for what has been showed to us through the life of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we get a clearer picture of who you are. And uh, as I said, how you want to run your government and how much you love us. Lord, uh, I would ask that you would be with uh, our brother Hyper tonight mm -hmm. as he shares about your government um, mm -hmm. versus um, the governments of man. And um, Lord, we just want you to be known better. We want you to be um, understood. Uh, and um, we want to make sure that, oh, we ask, I'm sorry. We ask so when Hyper speaks, Lord, that you will give him clarity and um, the right words to speak. And uh, may his words reach a fertile ground, not only in the, the the hearts of our viewers and our listeners, but even in our hearts, we continually need you to grow as well. Mm. And um, again, be with Hyper. Thank you for this opportunity and be with those who wanted to join the platform today, but for whatever reason, they're unable to be here tonight. Bless mm. them as well. And uh, thank you again, in Christ's name, amen. 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 I thank you, Sean, for the introduction. Yeah. Um, I'm so glad to have the opportunity to share this message with um, you, my friends, and also the people that's going to listen on Facebook. Um, Harper, you know, James done the introduction. I just done the prayer. It, it's all right, my brother. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know. I'm just just sharing. So um, sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm just so thankful for the opportunity and I hope everybody's blessed. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Let's talk about God. Mm -hmm. If you have that opportunity and email us if there's any questions on this um, subject. Um, uh, you know, Sean it's, and, and James and, and Rod is, is always come each week and we share our thoughts and our, idea, our, our ideas. This week's um, sermon, our that I'm going to share with them is creators, laws, and governments versus human laws and governments. So um, 
it's so hard to to actually as a person like me and not god himself to describe god's laws you know because we know god's laws and his government is who god is and there's just so little we know about it yet mm. you know and for me to preach about it i feel a little bit underdone <laughs> but i hope <laughs> what i share the, the what i've shared what i'm going to share with you is that it will impress you to learn more about god and that's all i'm trying to do to know mm. god so that you can mm. know god better and relate to him in a better way in a better relationship and that's what i'm hoping for amen so um i just want to ask a question from our from my friends before we start are we worshiping a god creator or are we worshiping the man or the creature what do you think i are we worship if you look at religions what do you think are they worshiping god the creator or are they worshiping god the god a worshiping man or creatures or something that's created what do you think just a quick answer i i mean look i i think it would be a bit um unfair for me to speak for someone else yeah. so i will speak on my behalf and i believe that um yeah i worship god the creator and no creation yeah or creature or creature other other than obviously god himself oh okay. god himself i it think not, i was not created i believe i worship jesus christ the creator <laughs> and and it's so important to understand the word creator um you know in the garden of eden i'm just thinking of a story when god created adam and eve he created the two trees the tree of knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life and when they 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 partook of the tree of knowledge which god told them what will happen to them they could not partake any more from the tree of life the tree of life was there for them to partake but they could not take part of it because if they did take part of eating it they would still be living today and and you would ask me if god is life is the tree of life then god and i would say no but like god has given us power to procreate he gave that tree life so that we have life and that can't change that can't change that is why that tree of life which the bible speaks in revelation will be in heaven it will always be something that we have to partake in because that is how god made things to be designed things to be and god's design never changes because he's a creator and that is why if you make the sabbath even the sabbath was made for men it was created and i believe that we will in in eternity keep the sabbath which i don't believe was in the past but because of sin we will keep the sabbath holy each week because god has made it has put it in it's almost like the laws of gravity but we'll explain it a little bit more let's turn to our first uh, book if you can turn to the bible revelation 14 verse 6 to 7 and verse 9 i skip a few verses because i i just wanted to concentrate because i don't have much time then i saw another angel flying high in the air with an eternal message for, of good news to announce to the people of the earth to every race tribe language and nation what is this good news we are asking he said in a loud voice honor god and praise his greatness or his glory for the for the time is come or the time or the time of his judgment is come for him to be judged worship him who made the heavens the earth the sea and the springs of water and it's so clearly said they made um worship him who made the heavens and the earth and the springs of water and it is why i was speaking about creator I specifically said creator a third angel followed the first two saying in a loud voice now it speaks about the beast or the human that i was speaking about or the creature that's being worshiped whoever worshiped the beast 
which is an animal, and its image and receive the mark on his forehead or on his hand. So there are two types of worship that this angel will speak about. And that is, that is what we are speaking about. Who are we worshiping? This angel actually pronounces, who are we worshiping? And there's a wonderful story in Kings, 1 Kings 18, verse 21 to 29. Do you, all of you guys know the story of, um, hi, Anthony, how are you doing? Good. All of us know the story of 1 Kings 18, 21 to 29. Um, we all know what happened on uh, Mount Carmel. Do you know the story of Mount Carmel? Yes. It speaks about worship, right? Um, verse 21 starts off to 29. Elijah went before the people and said, how long will you waver between two opinions? Mm. He's speaking about it in the first verse. If the Lord is God, follow him. But, is, but if Baal is God, follow him. Then Elijah said to them, I am the only one of the Lord's prophets left. But Baal has 450 prophets. So it was only Elijah standing on one side and we had 450 prophets on the other side. Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. The God who answers by fire, he is God. So Elijah said to them, the Lord will answer by fire, he is God. And you know what the people said? Then all the people said, what you say is good. This makes a lot of sense. If, if Baal is God, he will send fire. And if God, the Elijah's God, sends fire, he is God. Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose one of the bulls. And prepare it first, since there are so many of you. Call on the name of God, but do not light the fire. So they took the bull, given them, and prepared it. Then they called on the name of Baal from, from morning till noon. Baal, answer us. They shouted. 440 to 50 prophets doing this. But there was no response. No one answered. And they danced around the altar they had made. So they started dancing. And we will see what happens next. At noon, Elijah began to taunt them, to joke with them. Shout louder, he said. Maybe he's asleep. Surely he is, surely he is God. Perhaps he's, he's, deep, he's in deep thought or busy or traveling. Maybe he is sleeping and must be awakened. So they shouted louder. And you know what they started doing? They started slashing themselves with swords and spears, as was the custom, until their blood flowed. That was, you see... The custom, as was the custom, until their blood flowed. Midday passed and they continued their frantic prophesying until the time of the evening sacrifice. But there was no response. No one answered. No one paid attention. Now we know that when Elijah asked, fire came from heaven. So, did you notice one thing that is similar in both these sacrifices? What was similar in both these sacrifices? They both they both would send fire. They both were asking for fire, fire. Ask for fire, but what about the sacrifice itself? Both of them were sacrificing something to their God, right? Both of them, both had the bull. There were two bulls. So Elijah said to them, Oh, I didn't read it. So Elijah said to them, Take the take the one bull, you place your bull on the altar, and I'll place my bull on the altar. So what I'm trying to say here is that both of these worships were to a God. Now we know that the word G-O-D is not really God. We know we know God as Elohim. We know him as Jehovah. We know him as different names. But being specifically that God was, was, was saying something here and Elijah was telling a, a practical story of the true character of God, right? Thousands have a false... Now, this is out of um, Faith I Live By, by a woman called Ellen G. White. She says, thousands have a false conception of God and his attributes. They are so verily serving a false God as were the servants of Baal. Mm. Right? Are we worshiping the true God as he is revealed in his word, in Christ, in nature, or are we adding some ph philosophical idol enshrined in his place? God is a God of truth. Justice and mercy are the attributes of his throne. He is a God of love, 
of pity and tender compassion. Thus he is represented in his son, our savior. He is the God of patience and long suffering. If such is the being whom we adore and to whose character we are seeing the assimilate, we are worshiping the true God. So what she's saying, she says, if we worship a God with compassion, with pity, with love, with patience and long suffering, we are, we are worshiping the correct God. Now, Baal's law, that's why I was talking about Baal's law and even the law we sometimes worship today. We human beings have always enshrined another way of government, another God in the place of God. We have made Baal, some people used to call him Baal, and his Baal's law is imposed. He had to impose his law. Thus, God must inflict punishment. God must, Baal believed that, the, the, the God Baal believed that there must be punishment for your sins mm. and, and requires appeasement or payment. Where can you see in that story that they require that, that they believe Baal needed appeasement and payment? Can you see it in that story? When they started cutting themselves. When they started cutting themselves. They probably thought that at that point, Baal is not accepting the gift because the blood has not flowed. Yeah, and he's so not they happy. believe in sacrifice, but they believe in the payment and appeasement. Why? Why, do you, why did the bull represent payment? Why does the bull represent payment for them? Why do you think? That uh, the sacrifice in, at that time represents a relationship with their God. But Elijah's relationship with his God is uh, with the creator. But their relationship with their God is... Uh, Human God, we can say, you know what I mean? Okay. And, uh, but they have no power. And uh, when they, they can't see, they can't see uh, their God to answer their, their, their prayer with their sacrifice. They've been frustrated, you know, they've been very upset. Yeah. But that's, that's, that's the thing we have to learn from, from this story. We have a God, a creator, which he created everything and we can trust him. And he's, he's there to answer our question as well. But it's almost the whole world that believes it. All the pagan gods, like Baal, used to believe it in such a way. There needs to be an appeasement or payment. Yes, that is the false god we're asking that. <laughs> yes. Now, I believe there are two reasons why it's been like this. The first reason is that Adam and Eve, when they sinned, they they believe the lies of Satan. It's the first reason. They believe what Satan has told them about God and they believe that. The other thing is, when a sinner bears us, we know we are born into sin. Let me rather say, it. we all are born into sin. So we have an inherent default of sinning, of, of seeing God like this. So those two reasons, we have to dismay, dis, dis, dispel the Satan's sin but we also have to ask God to rectify, or not we have to dispel, but Jesus has to expel the lies of Satan, but he also has to repair the damage that has been done in the humans. That is why Jesus, the only way that Jesus could explain salvation is by, by him becoming a human. That is why it's so important. So there are two reasons people were defaulting to this representation of God, because we inherited it from our parents, the fear of God, running away from God, and perceiving God that all law is imposed. That's why we must be born again and, and receive this new characteristics of who God is and be justified, mm -hmm. right? So what do you think it represented for for Elijah, you probably you met you, you you wanted to say something. What did it mean for Elijah? What did the bull represent? The sacrifice, because there was a sacrifice. But what was the meaning for Elijah that was different from the prophets? What do you mean? Like the sacrifice was making atonement for sin? Yes, but was it an atonement or what? What was it? What did 
what did the sacrifice or what did the sacrifices in the old day on the well they represented day, obviously they represented christ what did christ represent so let's go for we're talking about payment we're talking about the opposite remember you have to pay what's an okay let me give the answer so i believe that 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 in 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 the the in Elijah's sacrifice, it represented Christ. And if we understand the story of um, Abram too, when Abram wanted to sacrifice his son, God said, no, there's the sacrifice. My son will be the same. I will sacrifice myself. I will sacrifice for you. So it, the meaning, because of humanity's wayward life or, or, or being so far away from God, God gave them a relationship that they could have with him. And I want to read this with you. With intense interest, Satan watched the sacrifice offered by Adam and his sons. In these ceremonies, he, dis he discerned a symbol of communion between earth and heaven. He set himself to intercept this communion. So that sacrifice actually, which you speak about, Sean, atonement, that being at one with a person, he saw this happening. And he misrepresented God. And he must, and in, sorry, he misrepresented God and he's misinterpreting the rights that pointed to the Savior. Men were led to fear God as one who delighted in their destruction. The sacrifice that should have been revealed, his love, were offered only, only to appease his wrath. So that is the understanding. So they think, oh, Jesus must be sacrificed so that God can be accept us and receive us unto ourselves, which is paganism. In the essence, it's paganism in the essence. And that is why we've been talking for months and months and months. And we've always spoken about our God as a creator, not as, as a human and how humans deal with, with situation. God is a creator and he deals with things differently. And, and we know that the war that we are fighting, it's not just a war of, 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 of how strong am I, but a war of words of understanding who God is in the essence, which is important. Um, determined to keep the people in deception, the priests of Baal continued to offer sacrifices to their gods and to call upon them night and day to refresh the earth. With costly offerings, the priests attempt to appease the anger of their gods. So my question is, does God want appeasement? Does God need appeasement? No, we've, I think we've covered that. Our God does not need appeasement. During the Dark Ages, um, during the Dark Ages, they were thought, this is in great controversy, um, um, 88, uh, page 56, uh, chapter 1. They were taught not only to look to the Pope as their mediator, but to trust in the works of their own to atone for their sin. Long pilgrimages, acts of penance, the worship of relics, the erection of churches, shrines, and altars, the payment of large sums of, to the church. These and many similar acts were enjoined to appease the wrath of God or to secure his favor, as if God were like men, to be angered at trifle, trifles or specified by gifts or acts of penance. So here we see, we see it in the Old Testament, we see that happening. And after Jesus, during the dark ages, the church still continued with us, still continued with this understanding of who God is. And we will see that today it's, it's being seen that way as well. As, as the Christian church, as the Christian church still continued pagan traditions. What do you think? How did yeah. they turn the, the cross of Christ into a pagan belief? What do you think? It sounds like, uh, sound like some Christian try to, to believe the same like those pagan uh, in the Old Testament. Uh, similar because um, when you look at the Bible, the words they put there, like um, uh, propitiation, and propitiation is means like appease appeasement, but mm. this word is not 
supposed to be there. Supposed to be um, uh, like, uh, I forget the name, the word now, uh, re uh, reconciliation. Reconciliation, yes. Yes, but not uh, for appeasement. Because uh, where we will put uh, John chapter 3, verse 16, right. before Jesus Christ coming to this planet Earth, and John 3, 16, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And now after Jesus Christ came down here and, and, and revealed the character of his father and his government, his father, and yeah. then when he, when he died on the cross and then he had to take his blood to go to the father to change his character to accept us, it does not make sense. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you see? Yeah. But uh, we, we're so happy. We, we have a wonderful creator who loves us so much and he sent his son and actually he himself come down mm -hmm. you know to reveal us to us his character we are we are not need to be afraid of him he is our friends he's our creator he's our redeemer and he's there for us any times we mm -hmm. just need him but uh, we we run away from the creator but we go directly to the enemy yes mm -hmm. You know, that is a big mistake. <laughs> like many people use the verse, um, the verse it says God came to, so that the Father can forgive us, you know, for, 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 for the forgiveness of sins, sorry. Jesus came for the forgiveness of sins. I think, I think it's not for forgiveness of sin. I think for forgiveness, of forgiveness for the sinner, but not for the sin. Yes. We need forgiveness. Our sin not need forgiveness. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I we think need it. forgiveness. We need acceptance. Exactly, need acceptance. exactly. <laughs> and that is what where I'm going next. Do you see at the root of every pagan system is a God who must be appeased, right. propitiated, right. you use that word, paid off, and an angry, revengeful God whose laws operate like those of sinful beings. Yes, Sean? Um, Rod was going to say no, something. It's okay. It, it, it links with what you're saying now. Anyway, and I think it all comes down to maybe a lack of understanding of grace because, and particularly in the Roman Catholic Church, it's, I, I've seen a lot because I used to live in Brazil many years ago and uh, it's mainly a Catholic country. And where I used to live, there was a church that is on, it was on top of a hill and you have so many steps to get to the church, very nice church, um, you know, very old, hundreds and hundreds of years old. And some people would do uh, penances, you know, um, penance according to the dictionary and I like the words, um, is this, penance is a puni punishment inflicted on oneself as an out outward expression of he repentance for wrongdoing he had done public penance for those ha hasty words so people would go on the, their knees to the church you know so when they get to the top their knees are bleeding already you know they're suffering that and they uh, i guess in, in 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 their minds they believe that they're doing something in order to show God, their repentance um, is maybe it's not <clears throat> like they are paying something to God, but I think it's people, many people do it because um, they want to show their repentance in, in, in some, some way that they think I'm going to hurt myself to show you that I'm really, you know, sorry. I think some people do it for that way, not so much that they're paying something, but in any case, whatever that reason is, is wrong because God gives us grace. It actually says in the Bible in many places, you know, don't do anything to boast yourself thinking that God is going to forgive you because you did this or you did that. God is going to forgive you because he gives you grace and he gives you freely as long as you repent in your heart. That's all he needs. Um, so I think it's a lack of understanding of grace, really. Mm. What, what I, do we need, like, like you said, we need right. to, have, to receive forgiveness? What do we need? Yes. To so be, be repentant. Rep <laughs> Sorry? I, 
So they I didn't hear the question. The shame of God. You know, sometimes sin makes us feel shameful. And, and, and when we know we are accepted, we, we can then heal ourselves not to continue doing in what we are doing. But if you, if, if you continue, if you feel the sin in your life and you don't repent or ask for forgiveness, it's almost like something hanging over you. And you always want to um, exclude yourself from where it feels, where it hurts, where that sin hurts the most. But God, and we know that when you look at God, God is always forgiving. Is forgiveness personified. He doesn't need, like the prodigal son, he doesn't need for forgiveness. He doesn't okay. need us to ask for forgiveness. He always gives us that. But when we ask it, it means the Holy Spirit is actually intervening in our hearts so that we can see what we have done wrong. Yeah. Forgiveness is a gift. Yep. What we need to receive it, just accept it. Just accept it. Very <laughs> Simple nice. as. Thank, thank you. So I just... <laughs> I just wanted to add to what Rob was saying. The Bible verse that came to my mind when Rob was saying about understanding grace and stuff is Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9 when we talk about grace, but it also talks about works as well too. And it says, for by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is, as James said, uh, yeah. forgiveness is, but also uh, um, grace is also a gift. It says, it is a gift of God. And verse 9 says, not of words, lest any man should boast. Should boast. Yeah. So, so, like we said, human law, we say, I'll only forgive you if you apologize. But God's law says, in Matthew 6, verse 14, listen to God's law. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, Without asking for forgiveness, your heavenly father will also forgive you. Uh, Matthew 18, verse 21 to 22, Peter was considering about forgiveness. And he asked Jesus, as Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times should I, shall I forgive my brother or my sister who sins against me? Up to seven times, Jesus answered. Uh, sorry, up to, up to seven times, he asked. Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. It sounds almost, almost infinite, right? Seven what, times what, 70. Why, 70 times. Why, why do you think Peter said seven times? Because the Jewish people believe we, we, can, we can forgive people six times. No more. Oh. But he said, let me add an extra one. Maybe Jesus Christ will love me more. Let me add an extra one. Seven times. He said, no, seven times 77, you know. That's been forever. Yeah. Seven, seven times. Seven, yeah, seven times 70. Seven, yeah, yeah, that's seven, so, seven times 70 so times. Are you, are you going to have a book and counting that? So if God wants that from us. Like forever. Isn't God giving us that same forgiveness? And that is where we've gone wrong and, and, and misunderstanding the cross just for that reason that Jesus came to die for forgiveness of sin. Yes, it is a gift. Yes. But it's not so that we can be forgiven. God has already forgiven us. But when the spirit of Christ falls upon us and shows us our wrong deeds, we ask for forgiveness. That's full forgiveness. That's uh, 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 um, um, restorative forgiveness. You know, there can be a lot of people that's forgiven in heaven but they will still be sinners. Unless you get restored, like I said, that two part. God came that we, we, that we ask that the lies of Satan can be dispelled, but also to restore the character of God back in us. But God's law are principles on how life is sustained. It's principles on how life is sustained. Here are some examples of this. I'm just going to read this and then you can ask your questions. Some examples of God's God's law. Romans 11 verse 7 to 10. What then? What Israel sought to earnestly, it did not obtain. And I think you read this verse last week, Sean. But the elect did. The others were hardened as it is written. God gave them a spirit of stupor. Eyes so that they could not see. And ears so that they could not hear. So this very day. And David says, may the table become a snare and a trap. A stumbling block and a retribution for them. May their eyes be darkened so that they cannot see and their, and their backs be bent forever. 
Yeah, it just says the consequences of your sinful deeds. And that is how God works. Another verse. This is out of James 1 verse 15. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh, sorry, that's Romans 6 verse 23. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Be, not, be, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For what, whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also reap. Galatians 6 verse 7. Then when last is at full, at, then when last hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. James 1 verse 15. That's James 1 15. Yes. Psalms 9 verse 15 to 16. The heathen have dug a pit and fallen in. They have been caught in their own trap. The Lord has revealed himself by his righteous judgments. And the wicked are trapped by their deeds. Proverbs 1 verse 29 to 31. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, would have none, would have none of my counsel and despise all my reproof. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their way and have the full of their own devices. So, my brothers, doesn't those verses clearly say how God deals with sin and sinners? Doesn't it show God's design law that those laws cannot be changed? Those laws of God, which, which if you keep on turning away from God, will lead to destruction. And it's not that, that God is to punish us so that he gets something wrong. But it's clearly shown that God's law works on a design. He's a creator. He's made things to stand forever like that. When he created something, he's made it stand forever like that. Mm -hmm. So my question is, what do you think about God's creator? God is a creator and a designer of everything we have around us. And we've been speaking about this design law all the time we're speaking but we never mention it as clearly as today. That there is a design behind it, not imposed like pagan gods. And we can see it flows right from the Old Testament, right in after Jesus. And even today, that people believe that today. And the world needs to know that God is not like that. There's nothing in ourselves that can give us salvation. It's only in Christ Jesus. I have a question. And my question will help other people who are watching us as well. My question is, does God's grace do away with his law or allow us to continue in sin? No, no. Amen. In, 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 in Romans chapter 6, verse 15 said, what then? Paul said, what then? Shall we sin? Because we are because we are not under the law, but under grace, God forbid. <laughs> that is wonderful, isn't it? Mm. He gave his own answer. Sorry? Yeah. He answered his own question. Yeah, exactly. And he also said, uh, how does the grace of Christ empower you to live a new life like Jesus? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship, create in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has, has before ordained that we should walk in them. Also, you can have a look on Titus chapter 2, verse 1 to 14 as well. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not because we live in, on, uh, we live now in grace of God, that means we should not keep the law of God. And also he said the law, uh, he said, how you put that there? Uh, forget which, which, uh, which chapter and which verse. Oh, I forget, if, if, I, if I remember it, I will, I, will, I will tell you in a minute. Uh, just to keep talking, I will search it. Well, we don't even know what you're searching for. Oh, this one is talking about um, the law was, um, the law was. Was added. No, 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 not this one. Uh, 
I, I forget how he put that. It couldn't come to my mind. It, and then I try to get, I try to to remember this. Okay. If I, to search it, but just keep talking. I think the law, it's <clears throat> every person understands the laws, I think. And when we think in the general population, whether they Christian, non Christian, non believers, or whatever, when you talk about law, the only thing that you associate is that you have to follow the law because if you don't follow the law, then you get punished. You get a fine, you go to prison, something happened that if you don't follow that, you get this, and it will be some sort of a punishment. So for people to understand that God's law, works different it's very difficult it is difficult in even within the church you know various denominations i think 90 or more percent uh, do not understand how god deals with the law and what are the consequences as hyper was saying it's a design law like say you have a commandment that you easy to understand do not kill yeah most people understand do not kill we have human laws that says you know you should not kill and if you kill you go to prison god has his law do not kill as well yeah easy to understand do not commit adultery oh that's a little bit different because <laughs> <laughs> uh, one you don't go to prison and second maybe nobody will know and you know it's easier to hide and whatever and you think okay well what is the punishment for that well in human terms there may be no punishment so people think okay well if god is going to punish because there is a commandment that he says do not commit adultery he will need to punish you and he will send you to hell or he will punish you with fire or whatever it's very difficult for people to understand that the punishment is we bring it on our own. You know, if we commit a sin, we are actually digging a hole into ourselves by, you know, hardening our hearts and going downhill from then on. Um, so I think it's very difficult for people to understand um, what are the consequences of sin without having God to punish. People associate transgression of the law with some sort of punishment. Mm. You're on mute, Hyper. Okay, Hyper, you're on mute. You are muted, Hyper, we cannot hear you. No, he's still muted. Okay, doesn't work the, the space button, but okay. Yeah, thanks, Rod. Um, I, I really appreciate what you what you what you said there because, you know, as human law, uh, we think about how Jesus. Remember the woman that was caught in adultery that was brought before him, and they wanted punishment. Then um, the, mm -hmm. the, the 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 Pharisees or the people that were accusing her of, of committing adultery. It was going to get stoned. Yeah, they were they were about to stone her, and then she said, uh, do you, uh, "Your your your people, it is uh, is, is come to this. Uh, what did he, did he say? Um, I do not. The people who judged you is not here." And then she looked at him and he says, "I do not judge you too." So um, he looked, but what what he said to her, "Don't go and sin anymore," or he said it to the to the youngster. I don't know. I'm not. I must read the story again. But what I wanted to share with that story, what if she was never caught? Let's say she did what she wanted to do. And she left that person's room that she slept with. Do you think the punishment of sin, okay, not a, I'll say punishment of sin or the consequences of sin, actually was in her heart. She went home. Could she lift up her head high? No, she couldn't. She, she probably hid her head everywhere she went because she was so shy of being seen. We think about the woman that was at the well, John chapter four. She didn't want to meet in the middle. She met in the middle of the day when nobody was around because she knew what she was doing. So sin carries its own consequences. Uh, a, a person that smokes uh, 
cigarettes. You you can forgive him. You can you can say you can say okay nobody uh, punish me for this sin. But what happens to the body? The punishment still occurs. That is how God's design works. God's design laws. Those laws doesn't have to be God doesn't have to impose because our bodies were not meant to take smoking. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Yes, I find uh, the chapter I must uh, I said I will looking for. Yep. Is in Romans chapter ten verse four. In Romans chapter ten verse four, it said, "For Christ is the end of the law." for righteousness that's what we have to remember is the end of the law for righteousness mm. to everyone that believe but the law is still there the law never go away but is only the end for the law for the for righteousness i hope you understand what that means mm. paul make it very clear the law is still there, but only for the, for the, um, only Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. Now, because Christ himself is righteous, uh, righteous and Jesus Christ is equal. And if you have Christ, you have righteousness. Uh, in the law, the, you will become equal with the law because the law is a character of God, you see? And, and, and the law will not condemn you because you have Christ in you, mm. you know? And, and if you have Christ in you, you will not sin, mm. <laughs> you know? And the law will not condemn you. Mm. That, that's the reason he said, for Christ is the hand of the law for righteousness. But the law is still, uh, what do you call this in English? The law is still, um, it still existed, and there is another word for that. I couldn't catch it right now. I don't you know. See, I'm, huh? James, I just want to put it. Sometimes people want to make the law the horses. Yeah. <laughs> but the law is actually the carriage. The horses is Jesus Christ having trust in him. So when you put, when you put God in the rightful place, you will keep the law. You will hold up, uphold the law, and that's what Paul says. Yeah. As well, yeah. Anthony wanted to say something, but he's on mute. You're on Sorry. mute. Yeah. I wanted to say the talking about forgiveness. Um, you know, we 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 need forgiveness. Um there are a few people who maybe some people have never felt this way, but I think most people have come to a point where they wonder what's wrong with them after they've done something that they never thought they'll ever do you know we've all done something yes. and felt um embarrassed ashamed um felt absolutely terrible about who we are as human beings mm. you know when you do something wrong against someone maybe sometimes you're not thinking clearly you're just too excited and you say you think something is going to be funny and then you say it, and then you realize, no, this is not funny. This is actually very painful for someone else. And, and you're so embarrassed, you, you, you don't know what to do. You know, or maybe sometimes you're too, I don't know, maybe you're embarrassed to be seen with someone, or maybe you hide away from them or something like that. And then later on, you realize, my God, I was actually hiding from my own friend or something like this. And you realize the kind of person that you are to do certain things. Um, if they find out you want, when you want the relationship to be back, you want them to say, it's okay. I understand. I forgive you. We can still be friends. You know, when you've done something wrong, we need that forgiveness. Forgiveness allows us to feel okay. Uh, we need to receive forgiveness so we can feel accepted. You know, that's why it's so important to confess and, and realize that you have been forgiven. Because if you don't think you've been forgiven, you always try to avoid the person. So forgiveness is, is very important for our own well-being. There are many people who feel guilty in this world, sometimes about the wrong thing, sometimes about the wrong right thing, or maybe you do something wrong and someone is not there anymore, no one to forgive you. 
right? When you realize you did something wrong to someone who's now dead, but going to God actually lets, gives you the door to be forgiven, to know it's okay. God has taken care, he's going to take care of everything you've done wrong. He's going to try and fix it all and everything is going to be okay again. You're not going to be responsible for something bad um, continuing to happen. God is going to make you go a different path. So forgiveness, in my opinion, is it's a very important thing uh, that people need to know that God wants people to accept this forgiveness. And he's already forgiven us. He wants us to realize that he actually accepts us. He wants us, even though we have betrayed him, we have been unfaithful, and we've done many dastardly deeds. Um, but he's been there and he's just saying, look, come, let's talk about the things you've done wrong. You know, the things that are embarrassing or whatever, come, let's talk about it. And I want you to know that it's fine. We can be together and we can work on other things. Don't feel like you can't come to me. So I really feel like this is an important uh, thing for people to grasp that sin and, yeah, well, that, that would be a different subject, I guess. Yeah, but I think it's important at the beginning to just make it clear that God really wants us, you know. Um, but, but Anthony, just coming back, I, I completely agree with what you're saying. I just want us to broaden the thinking on forgiveness. Has forgiveness become a legal issue in salvation, in Christianity? Yeah, but before you kind of say that, I want to say, Anthony, I like what you said because you backed up what James said when James said that God is already always ready to forgive us and forgiveness is a gift. All we have to do is accept it. Mm. Yeah. And then he obviously used the analogy of the prodigal son. So yeah, well said. Matthew, sorry, sorry. I have, I, I have a question on this one because I just listened to what Anthony just said um, a little bit. He said maybe if this person know he already forgive his life will be different. But my question is, is forgiveness a blessed experience? Yes. Yes. It, you, can, you can read. Depends. Um, I think it uh, depends on whether the person accepts it or not. Yeah. Because you oh, can be speaking about I'm, accepting. I'm, that's what I'm saying. Is forgiveness a blessed experience? Yes, you're right. If you accept it, you will experience it like iPads just uh, agree you mm. see but you can have a look in uh, Psalm 32 verse 1 and Roman chapter 4 verse 7 oh there is more, more than that but um, really you when Jesus Christ is in you because he is Jesus, uh, God himself is forgiveness is a gift and when Jesus Christ is in you or the Holy Spirit you feel different my brother you, you are a different person you know but uh, mm. But, you have to experience it to know yes, it, yes. <laughs> you know. Some, you sometimes, in, sometimes in keeping in line with Hyper's uh, sermon about, you know, God's law and, and, and man's law to going from design law to impose law. Sometimes I think that we kind of, I just want to add this one little comment, then we can continue forward. But sometimes I think that we, meaning humanity, kind of reason from our own low standard of right and justice. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? And and I think that we that we measure and, and by doing that we 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 automatically kind of measure God by ourselves. And and we and we reason as to um how we should act maybe under a certain circumstance or or a situation, and then we kind of decide or think that um, God would do the same thing that we would do. We imagine that, yeah. but we yeah. don't. We have to remember what God said in the Book of Isaiah. When it says, "My thoughts are higher than yours, and my my ways are not your ways." And um, I think that sometimes when we start to look at things in our vision and our understanding, and then put that in agreement with what, how God would deal with a situation, I think we make a, a great mistake there um, in understanding that because the thing that keeps coming to me in my mind is what initially James said and then what Anthony supported in his answer 
was that God has already given us forgiveness. We just have to accept it. And, um, and sometimes I think that we, as I said, just briefly, we, we think in our finite minds, and then we rationalize and convince ourselves that God will do the same. And I think that's a big mistake. And I think we need to be pretty mindful of that, but also very careful not to um, let that happen. But you know, Sean, it's what you're saying there. We will always fall in a trap if we believe God's law is imposed. We will mm -hmm. always fall in a trap. We will design our forgiveness like that. We will design salvation like that. Our, our way of thinking will be like that. And that is why I I, I agree I'm asking if you believe that God is a designer of things and he created things to exist a certain way. And if we're out of harmony or with that design, there is consequences to that. Natural. Natural, Natural consequences. Yeah. And, 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 and before, you even, before you even think about, did God do this or didn't God do this? You ask yourself, if I think in design law, how would I understand this? How would I see this happen? And, and for us to, to, to really understand, that is why Satan, if you look in the beginning before sin, people think he wanted to remove thou shall not kill. He knew if he killed somebody in heaven, everybody would have rejected him. He didn't say that. He didn't say all the other things of the law of God. He didn't say that. He, he, changed, he changed the design of God's law to an imperial, that God is imperial. He imposes not how it's actually existing. So when God said to, to, to Lucifer, you cannot exist without me and thinking you can keep things holy and righteous without me. That is how God designed us to be. It wasn't God had to impose it upon him. You know? And, and, I mean, and I know we're talking so a lot important. about designed and imposed. Maybe you might, I know you have maybe earlier, but someone who might be just joining now, can you just give a, a quick brief, example of a design law of God and an imposed law of man. So, so, it, so Anthony. Yeah. Um, can I do, I, this is, I think I wanted to do this because I wanted to talk about it before then I think it's a perfect time. Yep. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. If, if you drive at 65 kilometers an hour, when it says 40 kilometers an hour in an area, that's a, I don't know, some kind of crime. You're, you're breaking the law, right? You're breaking uh, the Australian law, is it the city council bylaw or whatever it is. You're breaking a law. So, or maybe if the government says something, like maybe this is a secret, maybe you're in a meeting and the government tells you this is a secret, no one should know. And then you go and tell everyone, that's a crime, you know? That's a crime. These are, these are crimes or criminal acts where you are breaking the rules of the Australian government. But the Australian government can come back like two years later and say, oh, we have decided that's not a crime anymore, <laughs> right? And then you get, you get out of jail for something that you went to jail for because they were saying it was wrong. But they can just come up with another rule to say, oh, no, it's fine now you can do it. You know, these, these laws, they are human laws. But... Um, those are imposed laws because if, if someone has to do something to you for something to happen, for you to experience negative consequences from what you've done, someone, they, someone has to actually do them to you. So if you speed at 65 kilometers an hour and the policeman at the, in that area is asleep or is not there, nothing happens. You just go to work, you move on. There's no problem. Life continues as normal. But design law is, um, is different. It's the things that happen inside of us when we do something. So for example, if a person is smiling and you, you accept the smile and you smile back, there's joy inside. Is that it what happens. you call moral law? Yes, that's okay. inside. It's design law. It's, even if the government is there or if someone else is not there, it doesn't matter. It, it works when you're all by yourself, it's all always working and you cannot stop it from working, just like breathing. Everybody wants to breathe. So the design law is, is, is natural. It's designed into us by God. And if you uh, stop? If, 
if you stop if you stop following god's law you, no, start, if you stop breathing if you stop deterior, if you stop breathing you will die physically die that's that's design that so, is design so yeah but, yeah but, so maybe but, i'm taking longer but my point is design law works naturally no one has to come in to to move things it. or force things to work a certain way yeah but human law needs policemen and cameras and lawyers and all these things because it's all you know it's all it's all a bunch of people making up things trying to make the world a better place but it usually leads to more chaos what is your answer for those people who don't like moral law which is god like law it. why is it don't like it because it, it it points it points or sheds a light on them because yeah. james yes because they see god they, they they see god as an as an imposed law when you see it as a design law you would understand it's hurting me i don't have to fear god it's hurting me and that is what's afraid that is what what is so important we can stand we can stand here and say let's change the law of gravity we can decide it, James. We can make claims and say, let's, let's, let's change it. But can we change the law of gravity? No. It's designed. It's in, in the way it is. So, so if people think that the law of God, the Ten Commandments, if people can think that they can change the commandments of God, they've already changed that law to a, to a imposed law. Because imposed yes, but law my, point, my point is, why is it don't like it? Yeah. Yeah, well, Sean, then... Sean, can you read that for everybody, even outside, to 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 hear? Roman chapter eight, verse seven, please. Oh, all oh, oh, right, hey, I like that. Yeah, God's law is enmity. Huh? God's law is enmity. To the... like, so our so. nature. Can you read it for me, please? Yeah, yeah. Give me one second. I'm reading it from the King James version. Yeah. Okay. Romans eight and seven. Yes, like please. I said. It's uh, Romans 8 and verse 7. Uh, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. That is a sinful mind. They cannot accept it. Carnal mind cannot accept it. You need the Holy Spirit to accept it. That is, that is wow. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yeah, you can't do it. You need God. You know, mm -hmm. as long when God is in you, it's nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, the Lord not condemn you. Yeah, and I believe when I was asking the question, it's, is it a legal issue? I think the only legal part in the whole thing is that the law condemns you. It's the law that condemns uh, condemns you, and 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 the law of God that 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 sinners will die. It's not. It's, it's God's design. It's the only legal part. If you break the law, you would die. It places judgment on you. The law of God places judgment. If I decide, we're speaking about gravity, 10 stories, and I fall down, what, what, what damages me? What makes my judgment? The law of gravity. And yeah, we, 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 all, we all deserve to die. But all, only, only reason we not die, or those who accept Jesus Christ, because of God's mercy. And God came down and to, to tell us, doesn't matter, even my law will condemn you to death. But if you accept me, now I can, I can uh, set you right back again. You know, justify. only God can do that. Yeah, justify. That's in justify. Romans 8 too. Yeah? Yeah, that's in Romans 8 as well too. Yeah, yeah, how wonderful. Christ summarized the law in two kind of command, commandments, right? One is love, love, love your God mm. and love your neighbor. Mm. That's what he said, you know? Everything falls into that. Love your God and love your neighbor. So at the end, the laws of God, they all revolve around love and nothing else. And if you think about it, any commandment, just pick one and you say, I'm going to transgress this, you will need to lack love in order to transgress that commandment. You will need to you know, go away from 
from from love in order to transgress that so as hyper was saying design law the universe is has been designed by god to operate in love and if we you know walk away from that we cannot live in that design it it, it sounds like the way you just say it sounds like uh, it never bull asking us all the times what you need to be saved. He said faith or trust. It sounds like love is more powerful than trust. Love is more powerful than trust. Yes. I think love is trust. In, in yeah, yeah you that's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, when you trust someone, you yeah. trust someone, but love someone, that is re re really difficult. But you can you can trust someone you love yes but sometimes you have to trust some people even you don't know them much but uh, you can you have you, you can trust them but that is the only thing you will take with you in heaven love so i think it's, like, it's more it powerful exactly, than trust and what you were saying earlier james about we can only find salvation in christ which is through the holy spirit working in our life so so a person it, it is to love somebody else has to receive love himself. Do you understand? Of course. Of course. And, and that is designed. God is, wants to shower his love on us so that we can shower it on others. Amen. And, 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 and yeah. without, without knowing God, without the relationship with God, that is designed. That is how God designed. It's not a legal thing. It's just how God made it to be. If we in a relationship with God, we then become give that love to others and i think we all explained it so well which is so important you know mm -hmm. and um and i think i think there's just so much that we need to speak about this how it works in reality how 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 the, the destruction of the sinner in reality everything we need to discuss we also need to discuss salvation what what is what is a justification what is sanctification in terms of the design law? What is glorification in terms of design law? We cannot, we cannot just, um, because when I've learned about it, I did see it as imposed. There's certain things I need to do and there's certain things that God needs to forgive me and then God covers me and, 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 and I will never be perfect. God wants me to be perfect. God wants me to have a happy life. God wants the laws that he has designed to give my life that abundant life. God wants that. But he, he knows that because we are in defect, we need to come to him. Not just because we are in defect, because he is love. He is love, it says. God is love and he is life. So if we, if we look at, at, at this and, 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 and want to really understand it, we need to paint a very good picture of how everything happens so that we can understand how God's work. And when we, when, we, when we think God's law is imposed, that he is all powerful and he's commanding us to do this, no, but no, he has made things to work this way. And because his love, he's always reacted towards us with love, always reacted towards us with love. And that is so important. That is a good thing you just said about justification, sanctification, glorification, whatever. Uh, for, you know, but uh, all of that is a gift from God. And if you have Jesus in you, you have all of that. Yes, but there's many, <laughs> there's many that don't understand it that way. Yes. And how can we explain it in that way? We can say just having Jesus, but how yeah. we explain it is so important. Yeah. People hold those words as valuable words. Sean was speaking about atonement earlier. We need to explain what these words mean in reality, how life works, not just a, a, a counting uh, situation. You mm. remember Jesus said, without me, you can't do nothing. <laughs> you know, you need me, you know, yeah. you as a branch, you know, and, and, and if you want to produce fruit, you have to be with a grapevine, oh. you know, with a vine, you know, and Jesus is the vine. If we have Jesus, we have everything. Yeah, it's an simple. example you, you, you show there, he is the vine, he is the light, he is the water, he yeah. is all the, all the things that works in nature, all the things that now nature works, how the design works in nature. 
our salvation works the same way. And we sometimes separate those two thoughts and, and we think that, that, um, that there's God works differently. There's a moral law and, and, and a moral law and, and stuff. There's nothing. God's moral law is how we treat each other. And, but we first need to know God. Is there anybody in closing at once to say something? Because I just want to go back to the original verse that I just read and just share something in closing. Yeah. Um, when you think, yes, sorry. Um, well, I was, I was going to... Um, I have two things. The first thing is I'm thinking, does Rod want to say something? And then the second thing is, I want to say something. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I you go to, ahead. Um, I... I don't know. I, I think I, I think I feel stronger that you should probably say something before I say something because I take a long time. We don't have a long time. We don't have a long time. Yeah, that's why I, you got nothing, bro. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay, cool. go ahead. No worries. So, um, I wanted to talk about if I was listening to this and I didn't have, if I didn't know if I had Jesus in my life. Um, yes, put yourself on. I can't see you. Uh, yeah, you won't be able to see me. There's no light at the moment. So I, I just switched it off because the lighting won't be too good. So, um, yeah, so uh, I think that if, if you don't know who Jesus is and what you need to do to have love showered upon you, as Hyper was saying, so you can shower this love, this love on other people. And this is so real, to have this ability to love other people freely and to enjoy looking at people and listening to them this can happen in life and if you if it hasn't happened for you um, my advice is the first thing you need to do is you need to pray and study the life of jesus mm. right and when we pray and we study the life of jesus and we say to god um i want to be like this person i really like what he's doing you know, as we study that story and talk to God and ask to be changed, there is another element which happens, which is from the Holy Spirit. There's another power called the Holy Spirit. We can't touch him or see him, but he comes into that Bible study and starts to change our minds. You say it's a real force that's out, not even a force, it's a person that is invisible. And he changes us inside when we are studying and thinking about Jesus and when we're asking God to be like Jesus. And we start to talk to God about everything that we're doing in our life. And then he will change us. So I, I could be wrong, guys, but I think this is the beginning part. You start there with studying the life of Jesus and praying and talking to God about what Jesus is doing and then asking God to bring that into your life as well. And then you expand to other parts of the Bible and then nature and all these other things. And you need to find a church, a group of people who already worship Jesus. They can also help you how to do it. So yeah, I thought that's something that's important to put in there. Yes, what, I, what, the, what I tried to share with you before about love, about faith, if uh, love is more important than faith, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 2, uh, he said, um, he said, I'll just read it in easy English. He said, I may be able to speak message from God. I may know all the facts and I may understand all the secret thing. I think I, uh, Tony talking about the secret before. I may believe, believe his face, trust, everything, right? I may believe God enough so that I could move mountain, but I am nothing if I do not, if I do not love. Mm. You see, I just very powerful one. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Break us home, hi. Okay. Now I read a verse for you, which thanks James. It's so true. Love is such an important thing. We will just be a, Sounding gong, doesn't the Bible say so? If yeah. we don't have love in us. Yeah. Um, um, uh, Revelation 14, verse 6 and 7. This, this verse that I read, it's a message to the end time, to the people at the end time. And it's everybody will hear this message. 
it will be a loud voice, which means everybody will hear this message. And it's good news, like we were speaking about God's character and about his love. For the time, sorry, sorry, I just want to read this. But the question, or a question, I just want to say, we need to worship him who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and the springs of water. Because if we understand that, we would know just by taking a breath of fresh air, we would know God loves us. Because we get it from the trees which God created and we give that oxygen right back to them. There's always, like I said, always that relationship. And unless we understand and know God as a creator or a designer, if we see him as an imperial person, and there's many Christians that believe it, there's many that believe it, we don't even want to live under an imperial government, but we want to live for eternity with an imperial God, so God is not imperial. He doesn't worshiping made the heavens and the earth. We don't worship him because he's got power to do that. Do we worship him because he's doing it? No, Satan knows he's got power. God knows he's got the power to create. But the important part is how God made this universe to exist the way it is and how it's being sustained. It is what is so important. God can show his power at any time. It was never, the argument was never about God's power. It's about how God uses his power. And God shows us through nature and through his heavenly design, his creatorship, how he is as a person towards us and towards all his creation. So I the pray that everybody, love. sorry? The power of love. <laughs> yeah. So I pray that everybody in everywhere could understand the importance of this because when you get this wrong you'll get everything wrong in the bible mm. everything the way you understand god to work the way he's made things and this is so vital for our understanding amen can i bow amen. for prayer must i pray dear lord we are so thankful for the privilege of coming under your kingdom dear lord living under your kingdom which you made long time before we were made dear lord you have made and put things so beautifully together that we have to work with one another we have to be in relationship with in unity like your son is prayed in the garden of gethsemane because that is that is what is so important dear lord it's not about just me being forgiven but so much more that my heart should be healed and, and I should become a better person like we've shared, receiving the love from you, we would give it to others. And if we sum it up, God, you do love us all. Even the person that don't even know you yet, you do love them. You've never forsaken any person yet. Since this world was created, you've never forsaken. But there are so many who have forsaken you, dear Lord. Father, help us never to do that, never to give up on you and always trust you in a loving relationship. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you.